Welcome back, and we are a year into Secretary of Education Betsy DeVos's term, one of the most polarizing picks from President Trump's cabinet, likely because she is one of the least qualified candidates of all time. From school choice to higher education, let's take a look at Betsy's first term. America, this one has been rocky. Let's first talk about how Betsy feels about school choice. Betsy DeVos has been wild when it comes to school choice. I mean wild. She just hates public schools. She hates public education. Here is her talking about public education. Just like the traditional taxi system revolted against ride sharing, so too does the education establishment feel threatened by the rise of school choice. In both cases, the entrenched status quo has resisted models that empower individuals. Nobody mandates that you take an Uber or Lyft over a taxi, nor should they. But if you think ride sharing is the best option for you, the government shouldn't get in your way. Here's what we know. Since her, since the, her first year of being Secretary of Education, public education has actually improved across the board, across the country. and. School choice options have actually decreased their performance across the board, across the country. Betsy DeVos has only made moderate progress on her school choice agenda. There, one, there was one victory that she had in the tax overhaul, allowing families to use their 529 college savings plan to pay for K-12 private school tuition. Betsy DeVos has not visited one public school since being Secretary of Education, and she has not ever said anything nice about public school teachers or public education or, I, I mean, here's the thing. Public education has been the backbone of America's success, whether you like it or not. Whether, even, even if you're watching this program and you hate everything I'm saying, the fact that you can understand what I'm saying, you should thank your public, educa your public education school teacher. Because every American, no matter how poor, or no matter how rich, was afforded the opportunity to attend 12 years of school free of cost. And there was once a time in America where these teachers and public education was valued. And then people realized they could make money off of public education. And when they realized that, they started to take advantage by creating charter schools, by creating school voucher programs. And over and over again, they tried to siphon off money from public education, they demonize teachers. They demonize teachers and they force students to take rigorous standardized tests that proved nothing. And I'm somebody who literally grew up in the standardized test era. I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida during the Jeff, when Jeff Bush, Jeb Bush was governor, when we got the FCAT, we were the first state to have this rigorous standardized testing. And I could tell you from personal experience, they basically made us sit in a room and learn how to bubble in and how to write this short and long response. Skills that I have never used again in life. But where I was, the skills that I actually used were skills I learned from my debate coach, were skills I learned from my drama teacher, were skills I learned from my economics teacher and my government teacher and my American history teacher who actually taught me real things and real facts and real life, tangible life skills that I continue to use today. And then after I left high school, the standardized tests got worse and kids spend more time testing and more time preparing for tests than they actually spent learning. And then, when the test started not to work, they decided to blame the teachers. And they said, oh, the teachers are the problem. We need to privatize the whole system. And that's exactly what Betsy DeVos tried to do before she was Secretary of Education. She tried it in Detroit. She tried it throughout the state of Michigan. And every one of her experiments, America, failed miserably. What poor kids need isn't more choice. What poor kids need are high quality, safe, welcoming, and thriving public schools. That's what their parents want, and that's exactly what they need to achieve the American dream. And it's about, it's about time that Betsy got the memo. Then let's talk about the Every Child Should Succeed Act. 
She supported Congress's choice to scrap the Obama, of the Obama administration's accountability regulations for the law. Since then, the Trump administration has been reluctant to issue new ESA, Every Child Succeed, gui guidelines, leading to confusion among states. So now she's, the, Obama, the Obama administration created an accountability where every state had to submit a plan to the federal government making sure that they were doing right by their most vulnerable as well as their least vulnerable students. Betsy DeVos said, this is overburdensome. This is too much. And now she is in her first year. She hasn't come up with one replacement. Then you have her bully pulpit, which is a very powerful tool for the Secretary of Education. A lot of times they use their colleagues' letters, they use their colleagues' letters, as well as speeches to inform policy, to educate administrators, and to move our country in the right direction when it comes to public education. Betsy DeVos is even less popular amongst educators than her boss. Overall, 67% of educators surveyed have an unfavorable opinion of Trump, but 72% said they don't like Betsy DeVos. For months, people have protested her from her first visit to a public school in Washington, D.C. to every single event she goes to. Educators and parents and students and community comes out in droves to protest her and to protest her agenda. This is not, let me be very clear with you, this is not some attempt by teachers' unions to stifle, to stifle or, or, or suffocate change. This is a community of people. These are Americans, citizens, taking up, taking up arms and taking, using their voice as arms, and they're using their stories as a weapon to fight back against the ridiculous and crazy and out-of-touch policies of Betsy DeVos. Don't take my word for it. Betsy DeVos made history when she, became, when she was a nominee for Secretary of Education. The, sec the Senate's switchboard has never received more calls against a nominee than Betsy DeVos in American history. So you name it. Clarence Thomas, Bork, all the people who failed to get nominated who failed to get nominated, Tom Daschle failed to get nominated by the United States Senate. None of them received more calls against their nomination than Betsy DeVos. I go on. In civil rights, right after taking office, the Trump administration rescinded guidance put out by the Obama administration that called for transgendered students to use the restroom that corresponds to their gender identity. And beyond just that, Betsy DeVos has used buyouts and staff restructuring to gut the Civil Rights Division at the Department of Education, which is America. Literally, the only stopgap measure to fight back against discrimination against students with disabilities, against people of color, and against LGBTQ, LGBTQ youth in school systems. But I digress. Then let's talk about higher education. DeVos and her team have rewrote two set of regulations put out by the Obama administration intending to protect student borrowers, gainful employer, employment, and borrower's defense. We've talked at nauseum about borrower's defense on this show. Betsy DeVos has literally rolled back all the protections put in place to protect students and to protect the American people from proprietary for-profit colleges and universities, which study after study after study has shown has taken advantage, not only of regular everyday students, they've taken advantage of our veterans, they've taken advantage of our most vulnerable citizens, they've taken advantage of the disabled, but Betsy DeVos, she's their best friend. And it's shocking to me because you have a president, right, who this week called for a military parade and talked about how he cares about our vets. And on that same breath, his Secretary of Education is literally rolling back protections that were put in place to protect veterans from for-profit colleges and universities that hurt veterans, that use, that squanders American taxpayer dollars. That's what makes this so crazy. Because you can't say, as Betsy has said, 
all that this is about oh this you know these these this is so much waste in the system there's so much abuse in the system when you are part of the problem look here betsy you can't support for-profit colleges and universities that pillage students when 80 percent of their money comes from the federal government so you your first year is over but boy do we wish you weren't as education secretary and boy do we wish that you won't get a second year but the truth of the matter is You'll get a second, you'll likely get a third, and you'll likely get a fourth, and our kids won't do better for it.